Welcome to Electron Line. Here's yet another example of how to work with RL circuits. Again, we have a instant change in the current flow to the circuit and how the inductor will react to that. So here we can see that we have this switch closed. This branch has no resistance on it. So the current source will force all the current through the inductor and through the branch right here. And so in essence, uh, there'll be no resistors in play and at steady state, the inductor will not oppose the current in any way because there's no change in the current. So you have the continual 6 amps current flowing through the inductor. So the initial current will be equal to 6 amps. But then once the switch opens up, now the current has to flow both through the 10 ohm resistor and through the inductor and the 5 ohm resistor. Again, at steady state, after a long period has passed, the inductor will offer no longer any opposition to the current. So now we have simply a current flowing through this resistor and this resistor, and the current that flows through the 5 ohm resistor will be the same as the current that flows through the inductor. So the way to figure that out, that will be equal to the total current supplied by the source times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch, which is 10 ohms, divided by the total resistance 5 plus 10, that's 10 over 15, that's 2 thirds to 6 amps, or 4 amps of current will flow through the smaller resistor, and 2 amps will flow through the larger resistor. Just so you can see that since this is half the resistance of this, it should of course carry double the current, and it's the same current as will flow through the inductor. But through the phase in which the current changes from its initial value to its final value from 6 amps to 4 amps, there will be a transition period and this will be the equation that then describes the current during that transition period. So let's figure out what that is equal to. So we can say that the current as a function of time is equal to the current at infinity, which we determined to be 4 amps, plus the difference between the current initially, which is 6 amps, minus the current at infinity, which is 4 amps, times e to the minus t over tau. Now, the time constant needs to be found, and in this case, it's a little bit more complicated. The best way to do that is to say that the time constant is equal to the inductance divided by the Thevenin resistance in the circuit. That's obtained by shorting out all voltage sources and removing or opening the branch where you have a current source. So if we take this branch away, there's no voltage sources, so now we simply have the, um, what we call here, we have a single loop right here, a single mesh. This is gone, this is gone because this is open, and we take this out. So the Thevenin resistance relative to the inductor, notice that all of the current then would flow through the boat resistors in series. So the Thevenin resistance in this case is 5 plus 10, which is 15 ohms, and therefore the time constant is the where we have 1.5 Henry's, the inductance, divided by 15 ohms, so that's equal to 0.1 seconds, one-tenth of a second for the time constant. So now that we have the time constant, since we're dividing by the time constant, this will be minus 10t, so the current as a function of time becomes 4 amps plus 2 amps times e to the minus 10 times t, and that's the current through the inductor, through that transition period. Now we want to find the voltage across the inductor. We simply multiply the inductance times the rate of change of the current with respect to time. So V sub L is equal to the inductance L, which is 1.5, multiplied times the derivative with respect to time of this. So the derivative of this is 0, and the derivative of this would be minus 10 times 2, which is minus 20, e to the minus 10 times t. And multiply this times this, we get the voltage across the inductor is equal to minus 30 e to the minus 10 t. So what this signifies right here, the voltage across the inductor, is that it's going to prevent an instantaneous change going from 6 amps to 4 amps. In other words, it's going to try to keep the 6 amps flowing through here so it's going to continue to try and push the current through there for a while longer. Of course, not for much while because the time constant is very short, but for a fraction of a second, current is continue going to get pushed through the circuit and slowly the current through the inductor is going to go from 6 amps down to 4 amps. And that's what's signified by the voltage drop across the inductor right here. And that's how it's done.